Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome to the second video in the series on two dimensional collisions. And we're going to look at momentum vectors. We're going to look at and remind ourselves what momentum is, um, look at 1D collisions that we already studied in level 2, and then how that uh, extends out to 2D collisions, and then some common mistakes. This video is more about the concepts involved, and I'll go through an example of solving one of these problems in this third video in the series. So, momentum. The symbol for it is P, uh, and it's given by the formula P equals mv, m standing for mass, v velocity. So mass times velocity is equal to momentum. The units are kilogram meters per second, so that's just from the mass, kilogram, and the velocity, meters a second. Now in these videos, um, moving right through, you'll notice I call them momentums, the units of momentum, 6 momentums, 12 momentums. I just find that easier to um, get across my meaning. But when I go to do a calculation, you'll see I, I change them back to the actual kilogram meters per second. Momentum is very useful for collisions, um, at predicting speeds after collisions. But a collision might not just be two objects that um, come together to collide. It could be one object that has an explosion and um, separates into a number of objects. And the reason momentum is so useful for these collisions is because of the law of conservation of momentum. And this says as long as there are no external forces, so there's no extra forces acting from outside the system. The total momentum is conserved the same in a collision. That means the momentum before a collision and the momentum after a collision is unchanged. So one-dimensional collision. So here's this, this idea of this is my um, graphic of a grenade I've put together. And you can see before it's 4 kg, it's very heavy. Um, and then there's an explosion and it splits into two pieces that go out at um, at these two speeds here. And this is a one-dimensional collision because it only looks like it's going along the x-axis. The way we describe these in level 2 was using momentum bar charts, and if you didn't know what they are, I suggest you um, find the video for momentum bar charts and watch that. They're very, very easy to understand and useful for learning about uh, momentum in the, the one dimension. So before the collision, this grenade, this ball, has no momentum. So I just put a little sort of a white mark on the bar there. After the um, collision, though, there's two pieces, a 3 kg piece and a 1 kg piece. The 1 kg, uh, sorry, the 3 kg piece moving to the left has six momentums. And the reason it has six momentums is, remember, momentum is mass, 3 kgs, times velocity, 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So I've got six boxes moving to the negative direction because that's the way my velocity is. How much momentum must my 1 kg piece have? Well, the total momentum is always conserved in a collision. The total momentum is the same. Now, if you look at the before collision, there is 0 to start with. I've got negative 6 now in my afterwards, so I need positive 6 to make the total equal 0, and I have the same before and afterwards. So that means the 1 kg piece has 6 momentums as well in this case. So there's my um, same picture. I can make some calculations to work out its speed now, and 6 momentums or 6 kilogram meters per second is equal to mass velocity, mass times velocity because that's what momentum is. I've got the mass of 1 kg, and I rearrange to find velocity as 6 meters a second. So that's what you would have been doing in level 2. This year though, we're looking at situations like um, in the previous video, video 1 of this series, that showed two billiard balls or two balls colliding and going off in different directions, so we're now looking at two dimensions. We can't use this momentum bar chart because it's only dealing with a positive and a negative direction. Here I've got a right direction, which you might call positive, but I've got to be thinking about up and down as well. So there's multiple directions now. The way we deal with this, now that we can't use bar charts for our 2D collisions, is we're going to start um, solving them using vectors. And vectors is a fancy word for our arrows. You've used vectors before. You've used them for forces. You might have used them for velocities and accelerations. So it's the same concepts. We're just applying them to momentums. And because we're not dealing with the forces or the velocities, in this case, we've got to make sure whenever we draw our arrows, we label them so we know what, what they are. So let's say I was doing the same problem but with arrows instead of the momentum bar charts. Well, to start with, there is no momentum vector. It's not moving at all. And afterwards, I had six momentums left and six momentums right, so I draw arrows to represent those. How do I show that that uh, equals zero? Now, you should just know that those cancel out, but we can formally show, show it using a set of rules on adding vectors. And that's the first thing we do is we add the vectors head to tail. So we take one of the vectors, I've got the left one, 
And then to the, the head of that arrow, which is on the left-hand side, I add the tail of the next arrow. And so like these ones go together like that. Then from where we started, so where we started drawing the first arrow to where we started, uh, where we finished drawing the last arrow is your total. Now in this case, we st where we started from, that dot, and where we finished from is the same spot. So if you end where you started, that total is zero. That makes sense. Zero momentum there. So let's look at it for this um, collision here. If we're just looking at our before collision, and I like to separate this out to make sure I'm just dealing with either before or after. We've just got the red one moving, it's got 10 momentums. So I've got an arrow going that way and I've labelled it with how much momentums I've got. After the collision, I've got um, 7 momentums going up to the um, top right. And I've got 7 momentums going to the um, bottom right. So when I add those, remember I add them head to tail. So there's the head of the first arrow meets the tail of the second arrow. From where I started from, which was on the left, to where I finished my last arrow, that's my total. And I like to put um, a double arrow there to show that it's the total momentums. All right. <clears throat> I also want to show that the total momentum is conserved in this case. So before we had 10 to start with, that is the total because it's the only momentum. And afterwards, when we put them together in a vector addition diagram, we had 10 as well. That's the reason we can have 7 and 7 is because when you add them in a triangle like that, they add to 10. And I'm going to show you this formally with actual numbers uh, in the next video. So a common mistake is when you get a diagram looking like this, my after picture, so you can see my after picture on the right, I've redrawn that. People just take those arrows and just put them together um, the way they already see them, like so, and they get something like this. And obviously that's not correct because the total momentum is not up or down in that case. You've got to add your arrows, your momentum arrows or any vector arrows if you're adding them head to tail, head of one arrow to the tail of the other. Okay, so before we even get on to the calculations, which is what the next video is going to be about, it's very common for people to make this mistake um, first.